Hello, I'm uh, Dr. Tim McClanahan, the principal investigator for the Feed the Future program titled in Achieving Coral Reef Fishery Sustainability in the Kenyan Biodiversity and Climate Refugia Center. This is the work we've been doing for the past two years to try and achieve sustainability in an area we've determined will be a climate refugia center, which is located uh, near this picture on the Kenyan-Tanzanian border. This uh, program has employed three people in our offices. Uh, Jesse Cosquet, who's been primarily involved in the fisheries catch and stock assessment work. Carol Abunge, who's primarily been leading the social surveys. And Remy Odenya, who's uh, helped with both of those activities. All, th all of us uh, work out of the Kenyan office of the Wildlife Conservation Society in Mombasa, Kenya. I'll break uh, our key findings into the fisheries production aspects and then the social survey aspects of the work. Um, the fisheries work involves stock assessment, which is measuring biomass of fish in a number of different locations within this um, climate refugia area. We were lucky to have a number of sites that have been closed to fishing. The oldest one has been closed for 45 years, and this time for space substitution allowed us to determine uh, production rates of fish and es estimate R and K values for the fish population growth. This work identified um, the maximum sustainable yield, which is uh, estimated at 2.8 tons per kilometer squared per year. We consider this a low value uh, compared to other areas in East Africa, where our estimates are closer to five to seven tons per square kilometer. We also found that the stock estimates in the fishing grounds were about 1.8 tons per kilometer squared, so they're not reaching the maximum sustained yield, but this is due to over excess effort, so the production is actually below rather than uh, due to overfishing rather than below due to underfishing. Uh, there's a lot of variability in the landed catch between the different fishing grounds that we studied, as low as 0.22 tons and as much as 2.98 tons. And in many cases, this was correlated with the management system, so the highest yields were actually in a well-managed systems uh, under the government uh, marine reserve system. Uh, the low productions are often in areas where there's unrestricted gear and often destructive gear. And in fact, a number of these areas actually have used dynamite fishing in these reefs, and those areas are associated with very low stocks and low productivity at the moment. So that, that, that means that these fishing grounds are losing up to 1.4 to 1.9 tons per kilometer squared, which is a considerable amount in terms of income, or three to 3000 to four and a half thousand dollars per square kilometer. This is due to excess fishing e effort and is exacerbating the poverty um, due to these losses of income and food. Uh, we did some estimates of how long it would take to, for fish to recover, and in many cases with no fishing at all, it would take at least three and a half to 16 years for fish to recover to maximum sustained yield. So it suggests a, uh, uh, any recovery process has a considerable cost associated with it. The key findings of the social part of this work is that people are highly reliant on, on fish, eating 80% of the people eating fish at least once a day and a number eating more than once a day. Um, that fishery li literacy was moderate to low based on a fairly simple um, test of, of knowledge of fisheries, um, some basic aspects of ecology, laws, identification, and a number of other variables. A no notable weaknesses in the knowledge is we're accounting for money or cost-benefit calculations, the ability to balance a checkbook and understand uh, what the uh, monthly gains or losses in income might be. And also general fisheries ecology, which may suggest a uh, poor understanding of the limits to fisheries production, and this could lead to problems in understanding sustainability issues. We also um, gave people four possible scenarios to consider and they listed community-based fisheries management as their preferred scenario. Second was offshore fishing, third was transboundary management, and fourth was aquaculture and port development. So the system that we are proposing seems to have a broad level support, 
whereas um, the government tends to focus on port and aquaculture development and offshore fishing, which has support but not as wide support as the uh, community-based management. We found that the community recorders were actually better than the government employees at estimating fish catches. We know this because they had higher um, recorded catches and they picked up some rare events and they had better coverage across the day. Much of this is because they're located at the sites uh, and are there all day and are able to identify the best times to measure fish catch whereas government employees often have more restricted time at these landing sites um, and have a narrow window of opportunity. Uh, the poor status of the fishery is hidden from many stakeholders because they do not have catch monitoring, and nor do they have the ability to correctly interpret the catch information. So that interpretation of information is an important uh, aspect that we need to develop going forward. We measured government institutions, of which we measured nine different institutions. Um, some of them are strong, but the weak ones that we need to focus on are the lack of monitoring, poor knowledge of costs and benefits, and resolving interactions uh, between um, neighboring communities where there's often a lot of conflict over agreed on um, types of restrictions. There are a number of conclusions and implications of this work. One, one is that the community fisheries management that we're proposing is among the top desires of our stakeholders and among the current development options and that the community approach is, um, works well, at least in terms of measuring fish catch. Um, another conclusion is that fishing effort is quite low and that's due to overfishing and low stocks. Um, many of the landing sites are earning uh, poverty level or below poverty levels of $3 per day where stocks are more abundant and there's more stricter restrictions. People are earning as much as $10 per day. Overall, we would like to see um, fishing re effort recovered to three fishes in per square kilometer and $10 today, per day, which we believe is doable, but it requires that stocks recover, which could take a number of years to achieve, depending on how it's, how it's implemented. Um, increasing knowledge of the state of the resources and fishery status should create incentives to create and change these behaviors, so there's an importance of, of informing people about these findings. Um, improved not monitoring knowledge and costs and benefits and resolving resolved conflicts with neighbor, neighbors is critical to achieving sustainability. So we need, to, in the final year, we're hoping to develop a plan to balance fishing effort with productions that is acceptable to stakeholders and that will be the core focus in the coming uh, nine months. In terms of the sustainability and handoff of the project, um, one of the funded activities is a final summary forum in which we'll engage and inform uh, both local and national stakeholders about the outcomes of this project. We're also intending to, uh, to hold a meeting that includes people from the rest of the Kenyan coast, but also from Lake Victoria. Uh, we've also been working closely with government fisheries management resource offices, and we're in, in discussions with them about the ability to sustain some of the core finances of this project beyond the ending date of the project, in particular catch monitoring. Um, we are also writing proposals to continue the work, um, to continue the catch monitoring, but the more expensive part of it is the development of prescriptive software, which we hope we can develop in order to help stakeholders interpret the data and, and make decisions that uh, move the project towards sustainability. Uh, through some way of effort reduction and alternate livelihoods that we hope to develop during the coming year. We're very grateful for the uh, work of um, and support of the Feed the Future program and we hope this is a good project for um, an analog for protecting climate refugia and in many cases uh, reducing poverty while uh, increasing stocks and biodiversity. Thank you very much.